My favorite verses is where there's no where there's no oxen, mm -hmm. the manger is clean. And you know, growing up on a farm is very, very yeah. uh, uh, profound, very sexy. Yeah. But with uh, oxen comes much increase. And you know, and basically, you know, Solomon's saying, hey, there's going to be a mess if there's labor, if there's forward motion, if you're producing something, producing yeah. something. But yeah. you know, but it's worth it. Like there's going to be crap in the barn, but mm -hmm. you know, if you want, if you want a crop, yeah. you got to have the oxen. So you're talking about the R&D culture, the yeah. risk-taking culture. And then, um, so sometimes our students, you know, in our congregation, we want people to take risks. And what do they do when uh, they mess up? They do something that embarrasses us, because that certainly yeah. happens. You know, we've come around the corner, and they're, they're in a pile, in a Holy Ghost pile somewhere in some Presbyterian church. We're like, no, no, not here. <laughs> in, the, or in the early days, in, a, in a, someone's business while someone's trying to make a living. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> like so, disrupting again, the guys. Again, these are wonderful problems. Passionate yeah. believers so, trying to follow the Holy Spirit's a wonderful problem. But how do you how do we address that with a you know correction for that risk taking culture? What is the, the the benefits of it? Maybe the, the the negative parts of it? Well, I think uh, coaches and refs. Yeah. I mean, I, I play uh, basketball at the Y, and not and, very good. Is no, it? I'm not, I'm not good at all. <laughs> in fact, some would argue that or that's a not linebacker. basketball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Yeah, not not very talented, but the biggest bigger challenge besides the skill is the fact that I've actually never played on an official team. So I've actually never played with a referee or a coach. And then, you know, I'm playing down there and of course my age uh, guys that play my age they typically were good when they were young yeah. and typically on a team. And you know, you can you any anybody that's ever played the game at that level could watch us and go, "Oh, that guy's never had a coach or a ref." Yeah. And I think that we we have instilled coaches and refs. Mm -hmm. you know, hey, that's out of bounds. Yeah. Hey, that's a foul. Yeah. Hey, there's a better way to do that. You know, the ref comes in, and goes, "Oh, well, well, that's a, that's a foul." But the coach comes in, and goes, "There's a better way to do that." That's good. Yeah, you got the right word, but boy, that was that was and a then, faithful but, delivery. But we don't always feel the need to publicly do it either, because no, if, you, if you if you do it privately, because otherwise you shame people and mm -hmm. people quit taking risks. If you have to feel feel like you have to unmask somebody every time they make a mistake. Pretty soon people realize, don't make a mistake here, which means they won't no. take a risk. Yeah, can you imagine somebody stands up, maybe on a Sunday morning, they give a prophetic word, and it's bad. Mm -hmm. And you, you know, from the podium, you go, that's a bad word, you know. And you want to, like, you want to create a culture of empowerment so people are moving yeah. in the gifts. And can you imagine what everyone else is thinking? Like, as soon as you corrected that person publicly, yeah. the rest of you are like, I'll never do that. Yeah. And so, you know, yeah, we, we have a, 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 you know, our culture is... Um, that we we coach people up. Yeah. We the only people we ever correct publicly, honestly, are people who are intentionally being destructive and consistently, and they consistently do it. Yeah. And yeah. then you know it's like, hey, if you want to consistently publicly just you know be destructive, mm -hmm. then we're going to have to actually let people know, yeah, not to have you around until you actually change your. You know, your mm -hmm. heart, your attitude, whatever. And I think we've only done that two times in the 41 years I've been with Bill. Yeah. So we teach folks to clean up their mess, take yeah. responsibility for a bad prophetic word or something like that if they give one. There, there, uh, one more piece yeah. I want I don't know if you're going there, but we also teach our people who receive word, prophetic words, yeah. like, you know, hey, if you get a bad word, flush, man. Mm -hmm. You know, your body has a way to deal with... To food, eliminate... Uh... Eliminate waste. You know, it's like <laughs> your spiritual body needs to have a way to eliminate waste. So it's like, you know, I, I got a word and 15 years ago and it destroyed my life. Oh, oh, please yeah, stop. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, just flush it and go on. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, so also we're not running around with somebody in our body, in our mm -hmm. movement, has a, you know, a word that's, you know, wasn't good or wasn't delivered yeah. right or wrong heart yeah, yeah. or maybe the wrong spirit even. You know, we're also like not, we're not reacting. Yeah. Because yeah. we have this safety net called the saints mm -hmm. who have a Bible, yep. who have a Holy Spirit, yep. who've been trained and equipped, and they go, oh, poor Johnny. Yeah. Got that one wrong in my life. Mm -hmm. You know, and sometimes, and we actually ask this, we ask everyone like, you know, think about how you should respond because if someone gives you a bad word, it's really good for, it's the way they're going to get better. Like the coach blows the whistle and goes, yeah. we're going to run that play again. You know, yeah, I don't, totally. I don't like the coach hates me. It's like yeah. no, the coach is trying to 
make sure that we we that we actually operate at the highest level of our of our mm-hmm. skill. Mm-hmm. And so I think it's important that you know people know like we ask our people. Someone gives you a bad prophetic word, especially like maybe more than once, or or mm-hmm. you, you think there was some destructive thing in them. You do what Jesus said in Matthew eighteen and Matthew five. Like talk to them. Yeah, yeah. So we don't feel like let's rush in and put out every fire. It's like. Uh, you should have a fire alarm and a fire extinguisher yeah. in your own house, you know? <laughs> it's better to pastor kind of wildfire than try to get a bunch of people who are afraid to take risks, yeah, totally. taking risks. And especially if you're going to blow them up every time they do, don't get it right, only get it half right. It's like, that's just going to paralyze you know, the environment. Some, you know, uh, some pastors, I used to brag like, yeah, we, don't, we know nothing ever goes wrong in our church. Yeah, nothing <laughs> ever goes on in your church. You <laughs> have to actually be doing something, you know? One of my favorite verses, and I know we're coming to a close yeah, on this yeah. subject, but... My favorite verses is where there's no where there's no oxen, mm-hmm. the manger is clean, and you know growing up in a farm is very very yeah. uh, pr- uh, profound verse actually. Yeah. But with uh, oxen comes much increase, and you know and basically you know Solomon's saying hey, there's going to be a mess if there's labor, if there's forward motion, if you're producing something, producing yeah. something. But yeah. you know but it's worth it. Like there's going to be crap in the barn, but mm-hmm. you know. If you want, if you want a crop, then yeah. you got to have the oxen, and I, I think that's a, it's really profound metaphor for all of us. And right now we're using it for this prophetic ministry, mm-hmm. but it's like you, you know, if you want you, the only thing perfectly organized and clean is, is a is a graveyard. Mm-hmm. So you know, life on life, raising family. Here's the man who raised family. Read Daddy's book, you yeah. know, loving on purpose, or you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. It's like you can read that, and you should, but life is messy. Mm-hmm.